Hello, this is Lori Michelle, the Mashiach, with life lesson number 24. Man's laws stifle, stifle, and enslave. God's laws encourage and emancipate. Our freedom comes from our creator, the king of the universe. He wants us to be free. It's mankind that enslaves and tries to shut us up. God gave us laws and his laws are intended to help us go the path of goodness and guide us to something better. Freedom, a good life, a blessed life. Man's laws are often designed to control you. You will not say that that election was fraudulent or you're gonna go to jail, God forbid. <laughs> I don't know if that's happening yet. They're trying, I think. I don't know. But look around the world, look in the United States, and today they're going to start an impeachment trial of the former president of the United States for speaking about election fraud and gathering people in, in Washington, encouraging them to show up in Washington to have their voices heard. So there's an impeachment trial, and I'm not here to try the case, you already know, if you've watched me enough, you know what I think about it. But I'm here today to talk about what are they doing? What is mankind doing? Not just in the United States, but for example, in Belgium, outlawing the slaughter, the kosher slaughter of meat in Belgium and Europe. And soon they want to outlaw circumcision, a covenant that Jews make with God himself to circumcise their sons when they're born. So why are men instituting these laws? And why did Hashem give these laws? For two entirely different reasons. Mankind wants to stifle and control your behavior to stop you from doing something. We will punish you if you say something or use a term or a word that we don't like. You will not say that word in Congress because you will offend another person. So it's about what someone feels. The laws are instituted to protect someone's feelings someone's validation, they want to be validated. So we are going to stop you from saying mom and dad. You can't say any kind of gender pronoun, he, she. We're all it now because we don't want to offend somebody who doesn't respond to those pronouns. And I'm not attacking, I'm just bringing light. We need light and the truth. This is what mankind does. They institute a law to stop you because someone else might get hurt. They'll get hurt because you said something that offends them. It'll make them feel bad about themselves and maybe they'll become depressed and maybe they'll harm themselves, God forbid. So we're gonna stop you from speaking your mind and saying things that you believe because it'll offend someone else. That's what's going on in America. Censorship, being taken off social media because you believe something differently than the masses. The majority of people don't believe what you believe. And so if you say it on social media, you are a conspiracy theorist, you are a white supremacist, even in the army I read a few days ago, there is a ban on, I think he's called Pepe the Frog, something like that. I never heard of him before, but I'm watching this and I was thinking, I think this is going a little far, Hashem. And he agrees. So I'm gonna give you an example 
of how Hashem, the king of the universe, handles laws and how he created them for our good, not for his good. He gives us a very wide playing field. And I'm going to use the example of Miriam in the Torah, his book, his books, his laws given to us, not mankind. Miriam spoke evil about her brother Moses in, in the stories in the Torah. And so what did God do? He struck her with leprosy. And it was devastating. And it was a very severe punishment. And he was teaching her a lesson that your voice is very, very important. So why did he do that? Was he angry with her? No. Well, he might have been angry, but that's not, he's, he's giving me answers right now. That's not why he did it. He was very angry, but the punishment was exact. You do this, this is the punishment. Why? because she needed to learn and everyone who witnessed this needed to learn how powerful your voice is and what God thinks of evil speech. And so what happened? Moses, who was harmed by her evil speech, prayed for Miriam, please Hashem, please forgive my sister pleaded with Hashem and he healed Miriam and she healed. So there was a lesson. He's very compassionate and his laws are for our good to teach us, to keep us on a path, to be, to encourage us to head in a direction, not to stop us. Of course, punishment does stop you and make you think but his intention is not truly to punish us. His intention is to hand us a lantern, a light, a guide, a, a guidebook of how to live a blessed life here in the physical world. And it is said in the Torah that if you follow my laws, I have freed you from bondage, follow my laws, and you will live a blessed life and I will provide for you and you will live on the land that I promised your fathers for as long as the heavens are above the earth. He desires to encourage us and give us freedom. On the other hand, mankind is self-centered and self-righteous and their laws that they're using are used to punish us, to thwart us, to control us. You will not say something that I don't agree with. I'm going to take you off social media. I am going to impeach you for a second time and make sure that we don't have to deal with you anymore. Hashem doesn't do that. He gives us freedom, of expression and we should do whatever we decide to do in the moment. And he even introduced into this world, the evil inclination, an inclination that is completely benign unless you choose it. He desires you to have a choice in every moment. I could say this evil thought or I could refrain. It's a choice. Freedom. He built this whole world, the whole physical world, everything that you experience with freedom in mind. He doesn't want little God robots, but mankind, on the other hand, wants little robots, little left-wing liberal progressive robots because they know better. Or, I'm going to slug the Republicans too. They want to control the woman and her choices, and they know what God wants better than the woman knows. True. 
Republicans know all about family values. Their ideas about the family supersede everyone else's ideas because they know best. And the truth is men, man, women don't know better than him. He gave us all the laws we need. All we have to do is obey them, but you need to know them before you can obey them. And people look at religious, Orthodox Jewish people, rabbis, for example, as completely oppressed. And no, they are wise and blessed. Why? Because they know that the laws that they're following came from Hashem, our creator, who only makes laws for our good, not for his good. Our good comes first to Hashem. Mankind makes laws because of what they think and feel and their opinions. God never ever makes a law to stop us from doing something. It's to encourage us to do the right thing, the right choice. And I could go through every single law with you, and one day, God willing, I will, to show you how that's true. Be careful about what you're against because when you choose out of a controlling need, a need to control someone else, you're choosing from ego and selfishness and self-righteousness. When you choose outwardly for the good of the person in front of you, you're choosing like Hashem. And that's what his laws are for. He says, good. One more example. Religious men often fly when we were flying, we're not flying now, before coronavirus, and refused to sit next to females. Islamic men do that, religious Jewish men. And females are offended and they wonder, I've read about this, what the heck, what kind of God are you listening to that you won't sit next to a woman and I'm just as good as you and that's ego. Let me explain to you what a religious man is doing when he refuses or asks to please not have to sit next to a female. There's a law that God gave us called don't commit adultery, right? They don't want to commit adultery. So they build fences around themselves and their own personal laws, self-censorship. That's what it is. And they've decided that I'm going to prevent myself from committing adultery and I'm not going to look at a woman. I'm not gonna sit next to a woman that's not my wife. I'm not going to speak to a woman that's not my wife. Those are his self-imposed restrictions, not Hashem. Hashem gives you a very wide playing field and he gives you a law and says, thou shalt not commit adultery. How you go about following that law is your choice, freedom. He just said freedom reigns supreme. So noodle on it, think about it. We are a world that has run amok. And if you wanna know more about what the source of our problems are, you'll read the Torah part two. This book, was written by Mashiach, Messiah, with the help of Hashem, every single keystroke. I promise you, I'm telling the truth. God bless you. Man and slaves, God is king and he wants us to be free. I hope you enjoyed this. God bless you.